Okay, we got a family affair going on here. This is the great strawberry transplant operation. We had our strawberries on the ground. For those of you who didn't see the first video, and we're transplanting them back up onto straw bales here. Try to get them off the ground, get away from the weeds, get away from the large gopher T-Rex Piranosaurus. He's massive and we can't catch him. So he comes and eats our strawberries. So we thought we'd move him up a little bit so that the dogs can see him as he climbs up onto the straw bale and uh, he will no longer terrorize us. But anyway, uh, mom here is starting by pulling the strawberries out of the ground, putting them in a bucket. Kyla is, I don't know what the heck she's doing, but she's having fun doing it. So, right, girl, you just keep doing that. You're doing a great job. Great. And then, uh, so anyway, what we do is we pour compost on here. We've had these bales conditioned for a couple weeks. And as we pour the compost on, Sean, you can see him down there doing that. Then I take that big dagger, like that like pole there, the red thing, and I jab holes into the top of the bale and fill it with compost. And then the girls, say hi girls. Hi. They plant the strawberries that Danielle pulled out of the ground. Now as part of the conditioning process also, Aiden is basically waterlogging all of these bales. Just soaking them to the bone with pond water being pumped up from the pond down there. So this is a family operation. We've got uh, 300 feet of linear straw bales to go through. It's going to be about a thousand plants. And hopefully we can get it done today because it is BEA beautiful out here. All right. Yeah, I'll start making more holes, okay? have to stand here and manually water all these but these lines have been used for a couple years and every year they tend to get a few little pin pricks so um, I'm currently out of my formal splicers which kind of look like the, the blue over here that's for a really really big split you just cut the line and you actually put a splice in it but I've got a few pin pricks I'm gonna just try duct tape so what we've done is mark all of them. We turned the water on, we marked them with this red tape. You can see they're kind of scattered around here. And uh, I'm just drying and cleaning it off. And I'm just gonna try to put a piece of duct tape around it. I'm hoping that'll hold and at least buy me time, if nothing else, to order more splice pieces. So we'll see if this works. As the heat comes out from the sun, that should melt into place. We'll give that a few minutes, we'll go fix the others, and then we'll test it out and see what happened. That one's a little bigger, so I don't know if the duct tape's gonna work on this one, but I'm gonna give it a shot. At least if it comes out the end of the duct tape, it won't be squirting off the straw bale. It'll go into the straw bale. And looks like one more on the right. All right, we've turned our hoses back on here. You can see my duct tape right here. And there's a little water stream coming out of it. But again, it's actually going into the straw bale there. So I'm not gonna worry about it too much right now, but it'll buy me some time to uh, find my extra splices. They're in the barn, but it's been a couple years since I needed them. So I will just have to find them. 
but at least there again, that water is going into the straw bale, whereas it was squirting off the bale. So that's a temporary solution, but uh, it'll get us through. All right, on to the next project. <laughs> Hi. What are you doing? Spying on you. Oh. Trying so, to clean uh, out the backyard. A lot of dead standing trees and it's ugly. Sunlight can't get to the floor, so I'm trying to make it that. Now normally we don't burn uh, the tops. You want to explain why you're doing that today? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to use the big trunks. Well, we cut as much as we can for firewood. Uh, we use the bigger trunks to lay down and stop erosion. Sorry, I'm tying my shoe. We lay them perpendicular to the slope to stop erosion and just let dirt build up and basically become a Hugo culture, basically. And then the rest of these, there's an orange Osage stump over there. And orange Osage will sit there for a hundred years. <laughs> so in order to get rid of that stump, we're just gonna burn some of the little stuff on top of it and let it smolder for a couple days and that'll get rid of it. We're here today on another beautiful day, late winter, and we're going to plant potatoes. Now some years I actually purchase certified disease-free seed potatoes from different companies, but uh, this year I happen to have a box that sprouted in my basement and there's plenty of them, so I'm going to use those. Same principle applies. These just happen to be a lot bigger than most of your seed potatoes. Uh, I want to note here, if you decide to grow your own potatoes, you have to be very careful with this, what you get from a grocery store. Most conventional potatoes have actually been treated with something that prevents them from sprouting like this, so they'll never grow. Normally, if you purchase an organic variety, they will sprout because they don't treat those. So in this case, obviously, these were grown naturally, so uh, they sprout with no problem. Now, before we plant, um, I'll give you a quick how-to here. This potato could be dropped in just as it is. However, that would actually be kind of wasteful because I can get two seeds out of this. You can see the bottom half of this potato has no real sprouts coming out, so I can't plant that. As a general rule, you want to have at least two good sprouts coming out of the potato. So what I do is cut them. I want these to go as far as possible. So I've just taken some potatoes, you can see, and I've sliced them so that every piece has two or three sprouts coming out of it. You can see that there. Each one of these will be planted uh, with the sprouts up as best as possible. And we will just see how far they go. Uh, this year we plan to plant about Oh, probably 300 feet worth of potatoes. Uh, we never seem to have enough for this family. So let's get started. What you doing back here? Oh, I've got some, uh, I've got some eighth inch metal screening to try to cover all the gaps in the soffit and up there. Danielle's not a big fan of wasps and uh, she figured sitting in the outhouse, she doesn't want to have to tangle with a wasp. So I'm gonna try to keep them out. Don't know if it's gonna work. I'll try to fill the other gaps with uh, expanding foam. But this will still allow ventilation to get through, but you won't have to deal with critters, in theory. <laughs> this is an outhouse we actually just built and got it compl almost complete last year. So it's got the main base under there. Uh, we kind of built it into a hill where it's tucked away between some trees. And we used almost entirely recycled materials. I think the whole thing cost us about $300. And we're just now opening it back up for the season. We didn't get it completed, um, so I've still got some cleanup to do. 
but a little fancy for an outhouse, I admit. We deal with a lot of visitors here at Redgate Farm, and they don't necessarily want the primitive outhouse, but um, we've got a gravity-fed sink here, so we'll be filling that with water as soon as these freezes are over, and people can wash their hands. We've still got to add a tube underneath, which will drain under the floor and into that um, uh, concrete block base we've got. And then the toilet is actually a uh, composting bucket toilet under there. So we don't technically have to use the base underneath. We could. You could just cut the floor out and have a normal normal toilet. But we Here's use our... the sawdust. This is from the lumber mill. Yep. So Everything that's... recycled is a little wet. Yeah, well, I haven't done her anything. So still got some work to do. I've got to lay the floor and... Uh, do a little of my finer touches here to make people comfortable, but we enjoy it. Sean just finished the steps. Those were all recycled materials. So it's been a fun project seeing what we could recycle and reuse and uh, not spend more money on. Um, even the lumber on the side of the outhouse was given to us by a friend. It was left over. It's actually burnt siding, so it makes it naturally preserved. And we were able to, to recycle that from her leftovers. So there you have it. Nice little outhouse. I can't wait to get it going this summer. got her this is an area of our farm we're hoping to get cleaned up this season this tree fell last year and oh I don't know if that's the best spot to put her probably back uh, out here where it's a little more open huh come on, come. Just don't let her put anything in her mouth okay you a happy birthday to you every day of the year may you find you Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, until you behold his face. Let him roll, let him roll, let him roll all the way, let him roll all the way, let him roll all the way, let him roll, let him roll, let him roll all the way, until you behold his face. Now you're not allowed to blow on it this year. What do you got to do? 
Well, you can't blow on anybody's food. Oh, that's right. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, exactly. If you look very closely down in the ravine, down by our big pond, you will see a tent and a couple of boys and a man. We're going to walk down there and see what's going on. A tent. That's my King Dome 6. So why do we have a boys night going on? Well, it was Aiden's birthday yesterday and uh, part of his birthday present was a camping trip with Dad. Yeah. And since we're all in quarantine and all the state parks are closed, we're doing a camping trip down here at the pond. So we cooked up some baked potatoes and Not a bad location. Dogs. Nice and private. And uh, we cheated because we had a can of sardines. Yeah, you've been cheating because someone keeps coming into the house every 10 minutes to get stuff. No, don't, don't, don't put that on film, honey. <laughs> We're 20 miles into the back country. Or 20 feet from the back door, one or another, I don't know. All right, well, you guys. Stay safe and warm. I'm going to go enjoy my nice warm bed. Hey, you got to take that dog with you. Cause oh, she'll never stay with out. you. She's my shadow. She right, Rosa? Yeah. Who do you want to stay with, me or dad? Oh, look, she oh, runs to the Oh, tent. wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Rosa, you going to go home? Are you going to go home? <laughs> All right. Say bye. Bye. Well, as you can see, we're in full swing here, getting ready for the season. We've got a lot to do, and we're going to be making videos as we go along the way. The best way for you to keep up with us is to subscribe to our channel, and that way you will be the first to know that we have a new video as I'm being attacked by animals here. But go ahead and subscribe, and you can follow our journey.